happening, everyone? Welcome to day three. We're keeping the Red Bull background for, for this because uh, I'm amped, I'm hyped, I'm ready to talk security, the thing that's uh, on the mind of everyone every single day and their most favorite thing. That's where we get the most, most viewership for these shows, right? Um, again, not in it for the money, apparently. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of good, healthy ideas I can popularize around security. And having my background, I think it's a lot easier to do because I've seen what works. I've seen what doesn't work. I have, you know, it doesn't mean I'm always right about stuff. But it just means that I've seen so many different perspectives that it's easy to see what really doesn't have a lot of ROI. And that's what I try to optimize for when I go for security. And that's what I'm hoping to share today, especially with the uh, controversial VPN discussion that uh, I'm probably going probably gonna to have a little bit of. So anyway, say hi to the chat real quick and we will get into privacy. Today is privacy day. And that's why VPNs are included. What's up, Bets and Crypto? Good to see you, man. Hope to see you. I know I'm going to see you this weekend, I'm pretty sure. Uh, at the barbecue, the event of the summer, other than the the, uh, the documentary, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, it's a pretty good meetups, but uh, shout out to local meetups and everyone doing them. They are awesome. And uh, I hope everyone's doing as many as possible out there. Chad of the Donner of Swans, he likes to get a couple, he likes to have the phone in one hand, the Bluetooth headset or the uh, the, the other one in the other hand with the, with the cords dangling. And then he likes to listen to RH Max from time to time. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, all right, got a lot of stuff to cover today. Oh yeah, VPN time. Red Squirrel's here. Yes, he is VPN time. That's what that's what we're getting into right now. We're gonna bring Ben in for the third day in the row. Welcome back to the show, Ben Dubard. How's it going? Good man. Thanks for having me again. How are you? You're doing? becoming a regular. Yeah. You're a regular on Security Week, if nothing else. Sweet. <laughs> you're, the, you're the you're the guy who said yes and and does really good demos. Dude, I know nothing about. Uh, this stuff really besides what you've told me so i'm just kind of here <laughs> today to well, learn enough, and enjoy it yeah. i don't know <laughs> well if nothing else man that's why i think you know i rely on chat a lot to sort of either disagree with me or bring up other questions or points or something they don't understand that's that's some feedback i got yesterday too somebody i think somebody made a comment like make make it new make it more noob friendly noob friendly like new people friendly <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, I don't know. That, that's kind of the thing. When you sit in the chair of something you know about and you talk about it, it's really hard for you to try to guess what people don't know about it. And that goes into like, you know, it's, you know, you probably have experience with this, you know, with courses and teaching and stuff like that too. But it's, it's kind of like you almost need a course and you need to get feedback on that and then iterate through it to actually make content that everyone's going to get most of the time. So with these live stream security week, it's like, okay, I know these concepts. I know how to explain them. But maybe there are certain things that go over people's heads or they don't quite have the building blocks to get up to understand the, the things, but they're interested in it nonetheless. So if nothing else, you know, I think that's something you help, help me with today. Be like, okay, what does that actually mean if I say something like that? Right. I'm the noob whisperer. The noob whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> I call Funding Jim the well whisperer the other day because he talks to so many wells and uh, he, he's, he's that. So yeah, the noob whisperer. Okay, I like that. Talk to lots of noobs. So there we go. As Chad says he's listening while taking a coach out and doing thousands of bodyweight squats right now. That's that's the Chad thing to do. That's look at that. Look at that form. Look at yeah, that form. Good nice. form just now. Oh yes. god. Oh, I pulled something. Oh just no. Kidding. Oh no. You gotta uh yes. <laughs> I, I don't want to give medical advice, so I'll, I'll forgive me if I don't comment on that. <laughs> we don't give advice here. We just go over the go over the facts. Right. Anyways, uh, DJN, please show us how to set up morning validator to go through script. This is not validator AMA. However, I will point you to a link that will, uh, you know, well, I'll just put it on the screen real quick because I, I was, uh, I'm going to get into it anyway, some VPN stuff. But if you go to the GitHub, this will be your best way to get help on this. So go to GitHub, go to Pulse Chain Validator. This is the script for setting up stuff. And then I, I wrote this, uh, I have this table of contents here. And if you go to the, uh, where is it? Where is it? Withdrawals, backups, setup monitoring. So I'm gonna put this in chat. If you go here, I'm oh, sorry. No, no worries, no worries. I will again. I, I do plan on doing AMA on on validators. I got. I want to do it on security, which I, I mean, I'll take any questions on on, on the AMAs, anyways. But all right, real quick, I got error during this. If part of security. Yeah. So that's the hard part. Again, go through the go through the wiki and make sure. I'll just say this quickly. Make sure that if you're doing this step with SSH. So this works for Linux. So if you're using a Linux box to access it, 
this is how you basically forward the port. So on your local validator, after you run the setup script, you should have Grafana listening on port 3000 on a local host, your local computer. And you can forward that to any port you want. In this example, I did 8080. So you're essentially, with this command, you know, replace this with password if you're not using key, key authentication, that's common error people get. You're essentially, you're logging in to your server, whatever that is, with your user, your IP address, you're logging in with SSH, and you're only doing one command. Instead of getting a shell when you log in, you're saying forward the whatever is running on port 3000, which would be Grafana, forward that to local my local computer that I'm dialing into that you, you're using to to get into to get at remote access to. Forward that to port 8080, and then on the local host 8080, you're basically just you're just tunneling. You're tunneling the you, you've logged in and you've forwarded the service in port 3000 to your local computer and to listen on port 8080. So when you click on localhost 8080, you're you're connecting to Grafana, which is listening on port 3000 on their remote computer. So you're just all you're doing is a very secure way. You're logging in, doing authentication, you know, bypassing firewall stuff. You don't need to do any of that in order to access your Grafana. So that's my two minute explanation. Hope that helped. Uh, but, you know, if, if not, then yeah, feel free to at me on Twitter if you're still getting problems with it, or wait till next AMA. But uh, it's a good question. And I wish you many, many like Crypty Girl. What's happening? Good to see you, Crypty Girl. Hope to see you at one of our events again as well. I know you couldn't make the the one this weekend, but yeah, I hope to see you uh, again. It's always it's always fun to hang out and do these do these local events and meetups. And Ben Dubar is going to try his best to make the Pulse Chain tour at some point. I think. <laughs> That's what I got from so. that. Yes. I, I don't think so. Though. I think it's in it's coming in three days to, <laughs> to near me, and I'm like three hours away. So, well, you know what you need to do. You've already got a plan. You, you get in a car of some sort and then, or a bus or a Greyhound or a helicopter, whatever you have access to. And then you get to that place and then you high five other hexagons. You take photos and you share them and then the world, yeah. the world gets better from there. The Greyhound bus. Ooh. They still have those. I don't know. Maybe they do. I, I don't know. I think they do, but. <laughs> uh, VPNs though. Uh, ben is uh how many how many VPN ref links do you have currently? <laughs> Zero. Zero. Okay, that's that's a good start of the conversation. So I mean again, no offense <laughs> to anyone out there who does VPN ref links, whatever, make money however you want. I don't judge anyone. Uh the on the problem I have with retail VPNs. So I'll start from the beginning. So the retail VPNs is became this 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 market opportunity. There is this thing where People say, oh, I, you know, I want to be more anonymous. I want to do privacy. I want to hide my IP address. I want to you know, feel more secure. Maybe that makes them feel more secure, whatever it is. And there's this, it's kind of genius by the, by the VPN retail people. They're like, oh my gosh, people are asking for this thing. We should give it to them. But while we're doing it, let's make it super like overblown. Let's make it like, hey, online privacy is important. You don't want to get hacked, do you? Like all this stuff. And let's make it, let's add it. Maybe we'll sprinkle in a couple of security features that, Maybe it makes sense. Maybe they don't make sense depending on the context. And let's sell this product through subscription or, or, or whatever it is. So VPNs originally were literally just to connect to another network. And when you connect to another network and use their resources, use their network connection stuff, you're going to look like you're coming from their network instead of your own. So this worked really well for corporate offices. People still work from home. Uh, like when you use them when you work from home, uh, you dial in. So it looks like you're coming from the corporate network. You're accessing corporate resources, all that stuff. There's many different use cases of VPNs. The retail side and how that became a business was literally like, you can use a proxy server, we'll get into this, you can use Tor, you can use all these other tools instead of VPNs, but VPNs are, they, they kind of found a way to sell you that magic EXE that you install it and it just works and makes you feel good. It's more about feeling good than what I actually think that it, it matters as far as protecting you and stuff. So, that, so that's one part. So they came from this, this idea of VPNs. VPNs are awesome, but usually uh, they're like, traditionally they've been used as this tunneling to get to another network and access resources. And they turn that into, hey, this makes people feel good. We can sell this as a product. Okay. So again, nothing wrong with VPNs, nothing wrong with even using them for privacy. However, when you start saying VPNs protect me, that's where it breaks down. That's where it becomes, what, do you, what does protect mean? So if you think that uh, changing your IP address where it looks like you're coming from somewhere else and not exposing your real IP address protects you from getting hacked, nine times out of 10, it's not. 
that is maybe it used to work that way in the 2000s, early 2000s, stuff like that, where we didn't have routers. We just kind of connected modems to the internet and you're, you were exposed. Everything on your computer was exposed. You only had one computer. You didn't have multiple devices, all this stuff. A long time ago, that made a little bit more sense. But nowadays, every computer pretty much, like generally speaking, is behind uh, NAT, which is network address simulation, which is kind of like essentially like a network se segmentation or a firewall. You can think of it as a firewall. It basically blocks everything. Uh, disconnect, you know, creates a separate network where there you don't have any of these ports or other things that are exposed that you would normally have a long time ago that people may take advantage of, you may have other services running, all that. There's a whole lot to unpack. I'm trying to be simplistic here as much as possible, but essentially security has gotten a lot better than it has than it was 20 years ago. So the need to hide your IP address is almost irrelevant for most things. If you're if you're just a computer user. Now, if you're a server, those attacks still exist. If you know if you're running a web server at home or in the cloud or wherever it is, and you're exposing other ports or other services or all these things, now security still applies to that. Now your IP address, which is publicly available because people need to know how to access your server because a, a domain name, you know, hex.com maps to an IP address. It's just a, it's just a, a, like a nickname. It's just basically a domain name is like a nickname for an IP address. You think about it like that. So there's a lot of complexities and get I'm skipping over, but essentially if you're running a server, your IP address is public anyways, but it can be a way that attackers can use to uh, you know, talk to the server and try different attacks and do stuff like that. If you're just a client, if you're just like, and when I say client, it's basically just, you're not running a server. You're not saying people come use my services. I'm going to use your services when you're a client. I'm going to go to your website. So you're going to do stuff like that. A client could be your web browser, computer, whatever it is. Your, your standard computer user is a client of the internet, essentially. So those things, your IP address really doesn't matter most of the time because there's nothing, if you're trying to hide it, it's for privacy. And I get the privacy aspect. The privacy aspect makes total sense. VPNs can, can do that. I think they're overkill and I'll talk about that too. But VPNs can change that aspect. But in order to sell it and make that not such a weak point, if anyone ever talked about it, such as I'm doing now, they, they you know the VPN providers, different ones, they try to, okay, we'll do other security features. We'll hide this, we'll hide that. We'll make, you know, you know we'll give you some sort of kind of antivirus like features here and there to make it look like we're giving you more and compete with other vendors. So this whole industry, again, was born from this like preying on the fear, essentially, of people feeling like they're going to get malware at every corner of the internet, which they still will do if you're running a VPN. A VPN doesn't protect your brand. Again, they'll say all these different little features and stuff like that. But I would argue that Chrome and Firefox have a lot of built-in security features that that just don't even, you don't even need, need the need. Like you asked me yesterday about what antivirus for Windows, what I think about malware bytes and stuff. And my answer was Windows has Windows Defender. It's built in. It's great. It already works. Kind of the same with this, where your browser these days, five or 10 years ago wasn't the case, but these days they have world-class security teams working at Google who work on Chrome and work at Microsoft who work on Edge and, and you know, explore what it used to be and stuff. And same thing at Firefox. They have people who are designing these things to make the browser the weakest link on the internet more secure. So the whole need, I, I've never installed, again, security expert, you can call me, been working professionally in the field for over 10 years. I've never installed a VPN on any computer at home that I can think of that I would use at home. I only installed it to when I'm traveling so I can look like I'm coming from somewhere else to get around censorship or whatever I was needing to do, watch Netflix, whatever it was. Or um, if I felt like I was connecting, I was traveling again, but I'm connecting to an insecure network. Now, the, I just want to frame this two more points before, before, I, before we move on. The, the, the point where the, the security versus privacy. So people say, oh, you can't have one without the other, blah, blah. Forget the philosophical part. I want to focus on the technical aspect of what the VPN, essentially what people use it for. What is the primary feature? It changes your IP address. And I want to go back to that and again say, most attacks do not rely on you exposing your IP address. Now, privacy-wise, you may not want your IP address to end up in certain logs for using certain services or using dApps or whatever it is. That's fine. A VPN can help with that. Again, it's overkill. I'll talk about proxy servers and, and stuff like that. But the fact that you change your IP address doesn't change, doesn't help you help from going to a malicious website and them installing a malware or you downloading an EXE and running it and, and getting hacked or downloading a torrent and getting hacked. VPN does nothing to prevent that. Or it may have some little tiny feature that it claims to do, which 
probably doesn't work very well because they don't have world class, usually don't have world class teams that the other bigger companies do. They're running these browsers and operating systems and stuff. So, again, the, the focus away from IP address and the focus on where these attacks actually happen, which is you're running an old browser, get exploited by some exploit or, or malware, otherwise, you download exe, you, you, know, you go to a malicious place, your VPN changing your IP address doesn't really do much there. It may change your browser profile, may help a little bit against targeted stuff, but generally speaking, you're installing it and you're also adding a tax surface. There have been exploits for VPN software. So it's like, ironically, sometimes, and security software too, antiviruses, there's a lot of stuff that's affected by this. But ironically, if you install VPN software and ha they have security bugs in that software, and they're hooked into your most exposed thing in the world, which is your web browser, you could be increasing your attack surface and even and getting, you know, increasing your likelihood of getting hacked if someone finds a bug in the VPN software and, and starts exploiting it and using that as a, a place to, to uh, hack people and stuff. So I just want to shift the conversation away from VPNs being for security to VPNs being for privacy, where they make sense. However, I'll get into a minute about proxy servers and stuff, how they can be this lighter way, way of doing it and a free way, even a lot of times too. And we'll talk about tour too, but VPNs for privacy, fine. Censorship resistance, fine. All that's traveling, whatever, but they do not stop you from getting hacked. They do not really help in that regard. And there's a lot of other cheaper, faster, I was talking about pulse chain, cheaper, faster, you know, censorship resistant net networks that can, uh, that can be more beneficial for you. So I want to set up there. Sick. Do you see what? that guy's comment in the chat? <laughs> which which one? He says you just have to about you have you just about have to beg someone oh. to hack your crypto to lose your shit. <laughs> in the in the bear market, the prices are so low that they're it's worth less. I like that. That's funny. Oh, MetaMask support? Sure. Here's my seat. <laughs> you know what? I have heard of uh I have heard of there there being like reverse you know so you have like nigerian scammers or whatever they call and you, you ever see the videos where they like they try to counter scam them they try to be like yeah, no you send yeah. me so this is like you could do that with uh i don't know i can see someone doing that with metamask or or these scammers on crypto like well, you see yeah send me 0.1 eth and i'll send you here's my wallet see i'll send you the four eth i have in it and then they you know they send it you that but you never send another one back and you like take money from them anyways i don't say anyone should try that but that'd be funny if like there was like a counter scamming thing but yeah, it's much more likely to happen in a bull market than bear market because uh, right now prices are depressed, if you will. Yeah, and, and people get emotional and like they don't think straight or they're tired or they're drunk and they just click around real fast and then all of a sudden they're like, wait, what did I just do? And they like send their money to, to the wrong place and they're like, oh shit. But uh, yeah, I've used to, from scan. <laughs> it is funny, like the narrative around VPNs kind of like shifted because the first time i heard about a vpn i think it was 2018 i went to uh, china doing like an english teaching thing and all the other teachers were like because because you couldn't use anything there like facebook twitter instagram snapchat you couldn't use any of that stuff there so they were like yeah well we're using our our stuff and i was like what how and they were like oh we have vpns and i was like what's that and like they all knew what a vpn was and mm -hmm. you know uh, so then I used it. Then when I was living in Portugal, I used it to watch uh, like my subscription services like Peacock and, uh, you know, like streaming services to watch soccer. I would just connect to the to a U.S. VPN to make it look like I was in the U.S. so I could access like U.S. only stuff. But uh, yeah, it's weird. It's yeah. like all of a sudden, like it just kind of started being touted as like a security thing. I feel like like it's marketed like, oh, you know, protect your protect your IP like. It's not like anyone, it's not like you have your address on Facebook and then stuff. And like you're at, you put your address on like every online platform these days, you know? So like, there's so many ways yeah. that people could just find where you live beside, oh, oh, I'm using my VPN to hide my, my location. It's like, all right, let's go hack the crappy shopping website. This guy put his address in to buy like a $10 t-shirt or something. Like there's so many ways yeah. people could find your, your address anyway. So that is kind of exactly. interesting. Yeah, it's literally became, it was like this ideal that worked and, and a lot of people, you know, companies used it and everyone kind of knows that. But literally, I, I've asked my, you know, security buddies before, hey, have hey, you guys ever used a VPN at home before? Have you ever used one? I've never had a single person tell me they have, like who works in security. And I'm like, I got to be, am I missing something? Like, 
why are they, why is everyone saying, why is everyone using them at home? And it's, I got, okay, it must be for privacy. It must be because privacy and the, and they conflate that with security. Um, and again, it's, it, it's one of those, it's just an unfortunate, it's, it's a misunderstanding and it's a prayer. And, you know, you could point out the dirty thing of like preying on fear. Like they're like, Hey, do you need security? Like the online browsing, people see other people getting hacked. I don't want that to happen to me. If I can pay for something, I can, if I can get that magic pill, maybe it's that, maybe that's the analogy, the magic pill analogy. If I can just get that thing and with $15 a month, you know, make me not get hacked. Like I'll do it if, if that's what it takes. So it's like, you want to believe it. You want to believe it. And because if you don't believe it, what's the solution? Like, I don't have a magic pill to sell you. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you you're going to be secure if you don't have VPN or, or with one. So like, who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to the, the, the comforting, you know, the comforting words, you know, the lot, the people lining up for comforting words versus harsh truth, or are you going to line up for, uh, for the other one? So, so I've actually, I've, I'm recalling now I've seen, uh, I think it's express VPN. It gets marketed by a lot of, uh, on like podcasters and they're like, Oh, express VPN. If you're at a coffee shop, you don't want people to see what you're looking at. So use express VPN. And they're like, Oh, an express VPN doesn't store uh, data at their, their center. So your data is, they're not saving your data. Cause apparently some VPN services will literally then sell your data. <laughs> they're like keeping your data and selling yeah. it too. So, you, so yeah, you're like, actually that's another vector of like you're actually being less secure i guess but is it is there mm -hmm. truth to that where like if you use a vpn at a coffee shop if you're on a public wi-fi it protects you from being monitored on public wi-fi or i would say barely and so it can so 10 years ago this would be a much bigger deal again in modern day a lot of stuff just becomes irrelevant antiviruses when windows hasn't built in become irrelevant uh, in my opinion uh like the vpn protection stuff hiding your ip hiding your traffic encrypting everything that is just a feature of a VPN in general. It will tunnel you through a secure network to then use that other network to access resources. So it's not that, yeah, sure, it'll hide your, it'll hide some of your traffic, your metadata and stuff that you're at a coffee shop if you're not already in, getting encrypted anyways. Because uh, with HTTPS, it encrypts most things anyways these days and everything runs on that. So 10 years ago, before Snowden revelations and all that, a lot of stuff was like, okay, only, only credit card stuff uh, should be encrypted, all that stuff, and everything else is okay. But nowadays, there's all these attacks and all these stuff where uh, it, everything's encrypted by default a lot of times. So a lot of the attacks that used to work don't work anymore. But why would they tell you that? Why would they pretend like, oh, actually, you know, your browser already protects you against a lot of this stuff, so don't buy our thing. No, buy our thing for one. Okay, so, so also the model, the, mo the business model is kind of lucrative. Like, it doesn't cost very much to spin up a VPN server. I can literally, I'll just put it on this while we're here too. There's a video of a guy wow. setting up a free VPN server using there's a, a cloud service called free tier. It's like a program with AWS. You can set your own VPN up. You can set it up anywhere in the world or not anywhere. There's certain choices, but set up in a different country, wherever you want, or same country across the U S wherever you want away from you and for free or super cheap. We'll, we'll say it like that. So you can set up your own VPN server and then you can actually turn logging off for example. So, but anyways, the pricing model is like, it's super cheap to set up these servers. So, so here, here's the reason why there's so many VPN services. One, you get to prey on people's fear and people think they're gonna be more secure buying them. So you've already got customers, you've already got a market. Two, the resources to set this stuff up is you just have a bunch of servers and you just route people to the servers that can handle it. And like the cost per customer is nothing. It's kind of like the, the cell phone service, right? How much does it cost to add a new line? I mean, it's like 10 bucks a month on your phone, but how much does it cost them? Like nothing, right? It's like, it's like a penny. It's like, it, it doesn't cost anything, but it's lucrative. So, hey, let's do that. And then the third, the third part is um, just the, the access to the software, the stuff they make is kind of like, there's not much to it. It's like, I, I think I never did it, but I feel like I could go write a program that literally connects to a VPN. I'm pretty sure I could, I could get ChatGPT to do that. Like, they just write software with a pretty interface that connects you to a VPN server and tells you, are you connected or not? Like it's so super low cost to making the software super reusable because it is software and you can distribute it and all that stuff. And then the customer base is already there and the resources to spin them up in the servers are super, super cheap. So it's like the most lucrative business uh, model ever. Like why, why wouldn't people take advantage? They have every incentive to, to every, everyone has every incentive to go make a VPN service themselves and sell to other people. 
Um, so that's why there's so much stuff going on with it. Um, yeah, here's, here's one. I'll drop this in the chat if anyone wants to look at it to see how if you, um, you want to set up your own VPN server or stop paying for it monthly or just see how this stuff actually works. Um, this is one, one guy who explains it, a bunch of other, yeah. There you go, installing my free cloud phone system. Okay, I gotta watch some more of Network Chuck. Apparently he does a, a bunch of this, like debunks a lot of this, uh, uh, build your own cloud, All right, I like this. I like this how you take a concept that looks very opaque and then you go through and say, hey, it's actually not that hard, you can do it yourself and why are you still paying for it? Hey, that kind of thing. What's up, CryptoCon? Good to see you, man. You're excited for security stream? Well, I don't hear that very often. Welcome, welcome, I'm glad you're excited. We'll be going for another 20 minutes, so uh, buckle up. I've actually got through most of the VPN part. Um, however, yeah. Oh, okay, so just back to your question too. What's up, AJ? Back to your question on the logs part. So them saying that they're not going to turn on logs and stuff, you have no guarantee whatsoever. Like, and even them, it's not even about them lying about it. There's so many different ways to turn off logs. What does that mean? Does that mean they turn them off in the network layer? Do they own the network layer? Are they running on AWS? Because AWS has their own logging system. Do they turn that off? Or did they just turn off the local logs? There's like five different logging systems. So they could say, we don't keep logs, but you would never know which logs they're even talking about. And it doesn't mean we don't keep any logs. So you couldn't even, you probably couldn't even like do a false advertising case against it because there's so many different ways to, to get around it technically. So sure, they would protect your people from maybe looking at whatever websites you're seeing. But again, who do you get? You're at a coffee shop. If you're not getting, if your computer is not getting compromised, why do you care? If you have a coffee I know, shop it's, it's funny. Uh, I think uh, there, it's like, oh, do you want the government and, and big companies to see what you're doing? Protect yourself. Get get the VPN. It's, and it's like, oh, yeah, I don't want people. Oh, yeah, that's my privacy. Ah, and then they, they're like, I'll pay 30 bucks a month to stick it to the man. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe that's what it is. It's it's so I'm I'm so big on privacy. I'm seriously super big on privacy, network, pri like computer pr privacy, all that stuff. But I focus much more, I think it's much more important to, for people not to read your email, to not compromise your computer, to not, you know, read your private messages. What you're browsing is, you know, that, that is like a, a much lesser concern. And I definitely wouldn't pay 20, 10, 20, 30 bucks a month for some company to tell me they're going to do that when I have no, no way, in fact, to even verify or evaluate that either. So um, can't like I, all of our stuff be seen anyway, like it's kind of like. I, just, I saw the Edward Snowden movie. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay. they're basically like, oh, yeah, like the government can read all your emails, read all your messages. They can activate your webcam and it look, you wouldn't even know it's on. Like, So on the webcam part, you, you would your computer would need to be compromised. So they would. So that's another thing that I don't really worry about a lot. Like if you're not a nation, if you're not getting targeted by a nation state attacker, such as the U.S. government or Chinese government or Russian government. Nobody wants right. to turn on your camera, okay? And that's not to say that you shouldn't have a camera cover or, you know, not do stuff that, you know, I, I don't know. It's not saying you shouldn't take precautions if you feel like, you know, you're talking about sensitive stuff. But it's just to say it's not it's not something that I would worry about too often because, you know, I, I don't think I'm important enough or <laughs> I'm not like a right. president. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not going to be <laughs> a cog in someone's plan to like, you know, do something very important in the world. I, I, w I don't think. So if you're not a very, very important person, I don't think that part is very uh, much to worry about. Right. And, and then the email part was, it's good. You think ego like plays into it too? People are like, oh yeah, you know, the government might be watching me. I got to get this VPN and protect myself. You know, like people think, I guess. People think they're like more important than they are. So they're like, oh yeah, someone, someone's watching me. Someone could be looking at me like, oh yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's, they, maybe, they, maybe they could, but what are they going to gain from it? So I would say if you're thinking about, and I've, again, I've had these, I went back and forth in different, you know, maximum privacy versus yeah, like it's only like what I care about. But I think the question to ask, I would ask myself for that to understand how much privacy I would want in a given situation is what, what am I? And again, I hate, I don't like being watched. I think that changes your behavior. You can't live in a free society. If you've got cameras on every street, I don't like any of that stuff. But I would say, what, what would someone gain from watching me, for example? I don't know what they would gain. Like, I, I don't, I don't, again, I'm not some CEO. I'm not some like president. I'm not someone who's going to be like some big piece in their plan to get something done that's very valuable. So I just want to ask myself that. And now I come to the conclusion I come to, which uh, is really? probably not. Yeah. It's like, 
Are you Monty. sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, somebody, somebody tweeted at me the other day something about, I always knew Max was like CIA or something. I'm like, what are you talking about? How, where did you get that? Like, how did you get that vibe? Because I'm, I don't know, because I'm, I'm nice and I don't, I don't like, I don't know. I like I, I talk about security stuff. I don't know where that comes from, but I, I saw that comment the other day. So, shut. I didn't acknowledge it on Twitter. I was just like, I don't know if this is a good or bad comment, but I'm not like I don't know if they were joking or not. But I acknowledge you on stream. So, thanks for an <laughs> interesting thing, I guess. Um, huh. The other part though is email. I'll, I'll touch on the email real quick though. So, okay. cloud-based email, Gmail, Outlook, whatever it is. I assume they're reading the emails, which sucks, but they're so dang convenient. Like. I, you know, I like ProtonMail. I like the privacy services too. And I think there's a lot of alternatives to getting more popular, but it is really hard to get away from Gmail and otherwise in Google services. But yes, I would assume I would never say anything that I didn't want anyone else to know. I would never send an email like that. And it's not because I don't think they're going to read it and do something about it. Again, I don't think you're going to be targeted for it. It's just that I just, if, if I, again, if I were, in person is best, encrypted communication is best, signal is great, stuff like that, encrypted instant messaging and, and video chat, all that stuff's great. But again, if you if you're using cloud-based email services with companies who best most are most incentivized to take your data and do something with it, whether it's your data or everyone's data and they just aggregate it and run models or whatever on it, just assume that it's being monitored and that it's not private if you send it via email. I mentioned before though, email trick too. If you don't want to actually send it, which this doesn't affect like them actually reading it because they can still look at your drafts, but you can make a draft. And then like, a, so for example, you have a shared, you create a new email account, a new free email account. And instead of sending the email, so it doesn't cross the wire, you just create a draft email and you leave it in the draft folder. And then you get the other person to go look at the draft. So the email never actually gets sent. So it can never be intercepted. So you remove all that attack surface. And you just have this like basically instant messaging system with drafts and email. So there's, there's like ways to, to get around some of the, if you're afraid it's going to be intercepted or, or otherwise at some point, for whatever reason, there's a way to kind of like turn inst turn email and instant messaging through draft folders and, and stuff. Uh, but in general, yeah, I think they, they do. Um, yeah. I assume they read all the emails on there because like they have access to it. So they're scanning for scam scam. Yeah. They're scanning for scammers. They're scanning for phishing emails. How do you detect like malicious emails without reading the email first? You kind of got to read the email. Somebody's got to read the email, whether it's a machine or a person. Somebody's got to read the email to detect if it looks malicious. And uh, so whether, what they're doing with it, I have no idea, but I assume they are. I'll say that. Um, again, VPNs, uh, good for privacy, but I want to go to... Before I talk about proxies here, well, okay, so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll wrap up on that one uh, on privacy at the end. I want to show everybody privacy.com because I think it's very important for credit card security and like using kind of a proxy for your credit card too. But before that, if you're not using VPN, what can you use? Okay, so proxy server. This is what everyone's been using for like 20, 30, 40 years. Super easy thing. Literally just Google search proxy server free. You know, some of these work, some of these don't work, but you can go to these different websites. I don't, I'm not promoting any, people ask me which one to use. And I'm like, I don't really want to promote any particular one because okay, I try not to give, I don't give proxy advice, let's say that. However, I can show you how to find uh, these different services that you can sort by different country. And it's really, it's so it's not just this VPN, double click, install, let them do everything. You need to type in this stuff um, directly. So you need to know, you need to have like Foxy Proxy, which is a proxy switcher that makes this stuff easier. You can use it for Firefox or Chrome has, I think maybe Chrome has the same one, but it's, it just makes it easier for, yeah, 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 Foxy Proxy. It makes it easier to switch between proxy servers and add different ones and stuff like that. But as you can see, I mean, there's, uh, well, this one doesn't have a lot of reviews. Let me see. There's another one for, for Chrome. Yeah, oh, yeah, switch proxy. So this one, 3,000, you know, a million plus users. So this stuff is not like, like esoteric, like, oh, this is like a, I don't know how to do it, that sort of thing. People use this stuff. So you can do this. You can add these different proxy servers to there. And a lot of them are for free. And then some of them are paid. You can pay for them. But it's like, instead of, you know, 10, 20, 30 bucks a month, it's like five bucks for a month or three months or whatever it is. So just Google for a proxy server free or proxy server um, uh, fast 
paid, whatever. And you can find uh, different ones. And essentially you get the same, like, I mean, there's different ratings of privacy and different stuff like that. You can kind of Google and figure that stuff out. But essentially, if you just want to change your IP address, which is the fundamental thing that a VPN does, it changes your IP address and then encrypts the traffic and stuff. But again, most traffic on the internet is encrypted. It's, you know, it's a VPN is a superior technology for privacy than a proxy server. But you're, I, I'll, I'll say that, but it's like, again, you got to ask yourself, what are you protecting against? Do you just want to change your IP address? If you just want to change your IP address, if that's the most important thing in the world to you, if that's all you're using a VPN really to do, a proxy server change your IP address. If you want to encrypt, extra layer of encrypting your traffic, make sure no one can see what you're doing at home, which is like, who's, who's looking at your traffic at home? That's the thing. That's why I, I never understand people installing them at home to protect from what? I would just, at home, a proxy server should be plenty. If I, if I just want to change my IP address, I use a proxy server. I'm not trying to encrypt my data from other people on my network. It doesn't make any sense to me, at least. So that's why a proxy server, I think, is superior in a lot of ways if you just want to change your IP address. And then there is a the Mac Daddy, there is Tor. But only, yeah, I know, the Onion Network. So the only thing about Tor, and the reason most people won't, wouldn't use it in crypto, is because, as far as I know, it does support MetaMask. So you can't use it to, for example, go to a DAP and then like use MetaMask and then protect yourself like that. It doesn't support that. You can browse other websites and and the uh, you know whatever other the Onion Network and all the other fun stuff that's available on the the other internets as well. But it doesn't support MetaMask, as far as I know, which is a bummer. Uh, that would be cool if it did because that then you could just it wouldn't just be like oh you got to buy a proxy server. It'd be like hey there's literally an EXE. Call it a VPN if you want. There's a little EXE here you run called Tor. It opens up a Tor browser, and then you can use your crypto stuff in that. I wish that was a solution, but I don't think it works right now. Uh, unless somebody, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody correct me, uh, Paul, the bank web. Yes, Paul, that web as well. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think MetaMask works with, uh, uh, with Tor, but that would be a game changer uh, if it did. So other than VPNs, two solutions there. Tor for non-crypto stuff, and then proxies if you want to, do crypto stuff in your regular browser uh, with um, with dApps and dApps and all that stuff. And there's different extensions here. Again, you can use, um, but that, yeah, I think that. You have any question on that, Ben? As far as like proxies, Tor, otherwise? No, it seems pretty simple. Sure. Still want to wrap up on this. We'll make it a little bit shorter one today because uh, I got to grab lunch before Corey on uh, Corey Costa uh, talking about RH and SEC stuff. Should be. I've been researching this morning. It's going to be a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. you guys should tune in. Nice. Benny should be there uh, in, cool. in, in, 30, in 30 minutes after this, but I wanted to get a little, little eat break. But I wanted to show up on privacy.com. This is super important for your privacy, for example. Uh, it has nothing to do with crypto, but I mean, I guess you could pay for crypto services with it, with, with cash stuff. But essentially, it's a proxy for your credit card or your debit card, uh, more precisely. So you sign up. I don't think it... I don't, does it cost? It's maybe it's like 10 bucks a month or something. I can't remember. It's not much yet. Yeah, yeah, there you go. 10 bucks a month. There's also a personal one. Maybe it's zero bucks a month. You know, maybe there's, a, maybe I use a free version before. I don't know, but it's, it's really cool. So it gives you a virtual credit card. So what it is you link your bank account, you link your debit card, whatever it is with uh, the service privacy.com. And then you can create these virtual credit cards. You can create like a new credit card for every every purchase you want to do, for example. So every time you're, so you're saying, so Ben's over here, he's like, hey, I want to buy uh, these, you know, hexagon bowling balls off this Go website. On, I want to, <laughs> you said that uh, I want to buy something, but I don't want to type in my name and my address and like my, my credit card information. I don't want to be that, be all the internet. Be be, yeah, you, you, want to, <laughs> you want to pirate the highest mistakes? No, no, don't do that. Uh, I wanted to, uh, anything you want to buy, but you don't want to type in your name and address and, and phone number and all that personal information, you can create a virtual credit card. And again, you just create a virtual one for each transaction you want to do. So it's all private. They're not, you know, they can't aggregate the data and all that stuff. And then you just type that in. And again, you can type whatever address, whatever name you want. It's all super private and it's awesome. And it's like, oh my gosh, like you can literally use this to solve a problem of not putting your personal information on the internet. It's great. So nice. you know how you know, you're like, oh, oh, I'll get it, I'll get something declined because I didn't put the right zip code, or oh, I'll try to change my name, but they check my name. You put whatever name and address and stuff you want, and and it works. Uh, I can say I've I think a lot of people use it. Very popular service. 
Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Paul says, best way to purchase items on the web away from Amazon with security. Yeah. So, so okay, I have one tiny Amazon rant. I don't like that there's like a history of all everything I ever bought for years and years and years on Amazon. I, I, I hope one day we have a law. I don't like laws. You know, I'm a libertarian. I, I try to minimize the laws and legislation and stuff, but I really want there to be a button on each website where I can be like, erase all my history. Don't, you know, delete past this date. Like, I don't like this forever data stuff. I don't like this, like, you've got to, you know, there's no proxy for Amazon, right? Like, you can't give them another address. You can't give them a fake address. You won't get your stuff. So I, I don't like the, the, the kind of, not the lack of privacy we have there with the physical good services, which I think privacy.com helps a lot with the credit card piece per, uh, part. But if you're getting something delivered to your house, you got to get the right address or we won't get there. So that's unfortunate. But uh, what do you think about having yeah. a PO box to like deliver, get delivered stuff to you always? If you really wanted to just like, oh, no address anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. You just go to your local. That's, that's the cool thing. You can go to your local town. You don't need to get stuff delivered to your house. You can go get a PO box, like Ben said. Uh, you pay, I don't know, it was like 100, 150 bucks a year, something like that. It's not much. I mean, it's a one-time cost. I mean, one time per year, for whatever. And then you just send all your stuff there. So yeah, th that's actually a great a great way to wrap this like into this bow here. So if you want to buy something, the most anonymous way possible I can think of on the internet. Again, don't do anything illegal. Don't do any of that stuff. But like in general, if you just want to protect your privacy on the internet, buying stuff, a virtual uh, debit card, privacy.com plus uh, go get yourself a PO box somewhere and this local nearby, you know, you just got to drive a few minutes or whatever to go there and get it. And there, so you can buy something with a card and you don't have to give any of your personal information and you get delivered to the address, which is also your other address, your business address, call it anything you want, call it, you know, call it your, um, your you know, you can use whatever name you want. I'm pretty, I don't even know if you have to use your real name when you get stuff delivered. I'm not even sure. But with those two things, you could buy something and, and not, you know, not conflate your, your actual information with it and still be able to receive the items and stuff. Uh, again, use it for good purposes only, but that's like, that's like how you do it, an easy way to do it uh, these days. Privacy.com and get your own PO box at your local uh, mail station. Cool. I call it, call it a trap house. Yeah, I mean, if anyone says anything bad, like they send you like, uh, you know, a, a barrel full of monkeys that you didn't order. Um, you don't, you don't, you know, they'll be at the post office. Don't let them deal with it. Not you. Right. So there's not a, that is not a, uh, it's not a euphemism barrel full of monkeys. Like, uh, I don't know, Ben, if a barrel full of monkeys showed up to your house and they start beating on your door and breaking <laughs> your stuff, you would, you'd like to prevent that. Wouldn't you NordVPN.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> VPN yeah. prevent monkey traps. <laughs> I don't think they do. Not yet. Not yet until they figure out a way to do it. Anyways, that was a super fun and thought provoking conversation, man. Um, yeah. Some good questions too. Yeah. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on again. That was cool. Of course, uh, yeah, happy of to come on again. If you want me. You're kind of required now. It's kind of an expectation that Ben finishes <laughs> out the week Thursday and Friday. He is, he is here I for know. all of security week, right? People, the people want it. Yeah. People want Ben here. I know. I'm like, I don't want to, now I don't want to miss a day. I'm like, man, I've done three days. Like shit. I yes. want to miss I, one. I'm with you, man. Again, I said at the beginning, no pressure, but yeah, you can come any day you want and just uh, riff with me on different topics. Like I said, you got, you got a lot of good insight as well. And uh, if nothing else, ask good questions and help fill the chat. I learned a lot. I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, I feel like I've learned a lot just streaming with you on different like security streams. I feel like we've done a, what, like six or seven total now with many yeah three. So i always learn a ton just being a part of it it's pretty cool dude yeah I, i'm glad you do me i mean when i get into it too it helps me research when people ask questions it helps me if i'm not sure about something i'll go research it and make sure i can give you give everyone a good answer too so um cool. very good stuff pepe says uh pepe olivar i have a 2fa yubikey nice yes uh yubikeys are awesome they're great for 2fa they're less hackable than most things and um, better than I like authenticators. Um, but I would be careful with those. I think those are kind of software 2FA. I think hardware 2FA is, is usually better, but YubiKeys are like the standard. That's what every big company uses to protect, uh, you know, people from getting uh, their employees getting hacked and stuff. So YubiKeys definitely recommend 2FA. 
Hardware, nice name and picture. Uh, people here send you this education. Thank you very much. That, that means a lot. I'm glad people are tuning in, watching the show, and enjoying their the concepts and the again ideals I want to popularize and help people understand the ground truth around these things. Because again, it's not just people shouting, uh, shouting, got to be secure, do this thing. It's like I want to tell you why I think differently or if I think the same. And um, again, if you don't agree, anyone in the comments watching this later, if you do not agree with things I'm saying. Please tell me what you don't agree with specifically and why. And I'm I'm happy to have a you know uh, conversation about it and do some more research myself if I get something wrong. Um, but it's just been my experience, and uh, I have a lot of ideals that I've formed throughout the years. But happy to, happy to happy to hear what other people think too, and kind of kind of get go back and forth until we get something good for everyone. So that's all we got. We'll be in Core Coast in 25 minutes. Hope to see Ben there uh, at least in the chat as well. And uh, everyone. Yep. Sci-Vive and 5555. Five, five, five. Come, come back tomorrow. We've got another one coming up.